Hey there, everyone. Welcome back to Utility Sports. And in today's video, we're taking a closer look at the Detroit Lions and a 2022 NFL mock draft for these Lions who are currently 0-7 at the time I'm recording this. However, they've been in many close games. Dan Campbell has his guys playing with their hearts on their sleeves. The only issue is this team just doesn't have a ton of talent at this point. We had talked about that a lot going into the season, how we thought, you know, the Lions just don't technically have what it takes to win a lot of games on Sundays this year. Jared Goff uh, just proving to not be the long-term quarterback for this team. And there's a few other issues as well. Before we jump into that, though, I'm going to urge you guys to hit that subscribe button. Leave a like if you're excited for the rest of the Detroit Lions season and also the NFL draft. Uh, and then also leave a comment today because if you do all three of those things, like, leave a comment, and be subscribed, you have a chance at winning a jersey giveaway. This is a Justin Fields jersey giveaway. Um, you can win this for free. All you have to do is three, uh, those three things. If you're looking for something to comment, it could be either about this video or it could be something as simple as the words Jersey giveaway. That's all you have to do to be entered for it. So now let's take a closer look here at the Detroit Lions. We're going to do a four round mock draft actually, which is a little bit different from what we usually do. Uh, usually on the channel, we only do the first three rounds. So we're going to jump into it here with four rounds. And of course, being at 0-7, the Lions do have the first overall selection. So we're here, we're gonna talk about some potential avenues. Usually I don't spend a ton of time going into depth here uh, for each individual peg, you know, kind of just give my ideas, my thoughts on why I'm selecting certain players. But here with the Lions, I'm actually gonna talk about a few different pathways because there's some really, really talented players in this draft uh, and they don't happen to come on the offensive side of the ball. This draft I think is loaded defensively, which kind of puts Detroit in an interesting spot because they badly need a long-term quarterback. And when you have the first overall pick, there's a little bit of pressure here to maybe pull the trigger on one. We see Matt Corral out of Ole Miss, Malik Willis out of Liberty, Desmond Ritter out of Cincinnati. Those are my three top guys as well. Uh, I have them in a light, slightly different order. I think Malik Willis should be the first quarterback off the board. However, I just don't see the value in pulling the actual trigger here first overall. If Detroit's in love with the quarterback, they should trade down, honestly. However, I don't see a team trading up for a non-quarterback themselves so it's kind of a, uh, a tough situation to be in so with them having the first overall pick here you have to look at the defensive players in this class Kayvon Thibodeau probably uh well not probably for sure the best edge in this class has been very productive uh in his time at Oregon hasn't played a ton this year because of an injury however when he did he flashed he was a great great player again this year kind of what we expected came in as the best player in the class and I think he's starting to really solidify that again this year Derek Stingley however though is a special man-to-man -man corner with elite athleticism I'm talking some of the best athleticism you're going to see at the cornerback position uh, in a spark 100 test he tested very very high I believe into a 98 99 percentile range so Derek Stingley very very athletic and then Kyle Hamilton kind of gives you the best of both worlds can play in the run game also very very good in pass coverage as a safety However, do we ever really see safeties go first overall? Probably not. I don't think Kyle Hamilton has a real chance of being the first overall pick this year just because he plays safety. Defenses tend to value that edge and cornerback spot a little bit more. That's where the money is in football right now. And for that reason, I think the Detroit Lions focus the edge position, look into that front seven, and go with Kayvon Thibodeau out of Oregon. It's a phenomenal pick. You can't get that one wrong there. Uh, any of those players would be phenomenal additions, in my opinion. However, I just think that Kayvon Thibodeau is the best one of the bunch at this point. I think that he's going to be a little bit more consistent, very good in the run game, has very, very good hand technique, block shedding, also very, very athletic off the edge. I think has some real, real high pass rush upside in the NFL, which is key when you're looking for someone at that position. Uh, and now here we are at 28, and we kind of see what's on the board. Interestingly enough, Sam Howell fell to us. Okay, he's here. I, I don't know if Sam Howell moves the needle enough for me, though, especially since I still have to be pairing, paying Jared Goff as much as I'm going to have to. There are some other really good things out here. Let's go look at the wide receiver position, which I think has thinned out a little bit. George Pickens is still here. Interesting thing, we have a pick, five picks from now, pick 33. So for that, I'm not going to rush that wide receiver pick. For me, it's about going with the best player available here at a key area of need. And for me, it's got to be more defense. There's two really, really good players out here that I really, really like for the Detroit Lions. Trent McDuffie out of Washington. He's a little bit of a smaller corner, compact body, not that prototypical length and size that you're looking for, which it makes sense why he's here at 28. But he is such a good football player. Does not give up catches. Very, very physical at the line of scrimmage. Despite his size, he is compact, strong, 
Very good in the run game defensively as well at that cornerback position. He would help the Detroit Lions a lot, especially since we don't really know what Akuda is yet. You know, had a, had a tough rookie season, which is very, very usual for cornerbacks coming into the NFL. They tend to struggle early on. And then he tears his Achilles. So you're looking at, you know, a really tough situation where you're not exactly sure what you for, for sure have with Akuda, who is a former top three overall pick. But then I'm also here looking at Nicobe Dean. The Lions, basically since before they hired Matt Patricia, were looking to try and build out that front seven and had failed to do so. In this draft, you come and get Gregory Russo and Nicobe Dean. You have two great building blocks along the defensive front. You put them next to Romeo Aquara, who's another good edge. Uh, and you've got business booming there in Detroit, honestly, with the defensive front seven. You've got three really, really good players there. And you can add in some more pieces. They took Lee McNeil last year as well, who I really like. They've got some guys along that interior defensive front as well. They've done a good job building. They need uh, that edge rusher with Gregory Russo. And then they need a linebacker. Now, Kobe Dean does make sense. I'm kind of talking myself into it a little bit. What else do we have at the cornerback spot? Can I afford to take a risk and miss out? You know, I don't think I can. I'm going with Trent McDuffie here out of Washington. I just don't feel like I can afford to take the risk on not getting a cornerback, especially since we don't we pick here, obviously. Um, and I could come back. Nicobe Dean did go, of course. However, just based off of what I felt, I thought that I needed to grab a wide receiver here at pick 33, which is what I positioned myself to myself to do. Sam Howell's still here, by the way. But oh, Christian Harris is here as well. Now that's that's interesting. Can I really afford to not go wide receiver for the Detroit Lions? Because they badly need some playmakers. Uh, at this point of the season, through seven weeks, Jared Goff has eight total passing touchdowns. So they need some help in that wide receiver room. I'm just trying to rationalize if there's someone out here. Oh, man, there's a there's a pretty big drop off here after these top two guys in Pickens and Mechie. Pickens is going to be more like that Marvin Jones type where he's big and go get the ball around the end zone Lions fans. You're going to like having him if you went that way. But there's also Mechie the third here. I think kind of fits more as a prototypical route running wide receiver. Alabama produces so many good wideouts. John Mechie the third hasn't quite had the season I was expecting him to have. And for that reason, I'm actually going to go with George Pickens here. I think the size that wide receiver is going to be valuable enough that they pulled the trigger on him there. 33rd overall over John Mechie the third. Just barely, that was a very tough decision for me. I really wanted to go with Christian Harris. I really, really wanted to take him. However, after already taking two guys on defense, I felt like I had to get one offensive playmaker for this team. They're badly in need of them. Um, we're actually seeing Christian Harris slide a little bit. We'll see if he can fall all the way back to us at 65. If he does, this is going to be an A-plus draft. Let's watch. Let's keep watching here. The Rams don't take him. The Raiders don't. Oh, my gosh. Christian Harris fell to us here in the top of the third round. That is absolutely insane value. This is going to be the, the best Lions team mock draft possible because Kayvon Thibodeau, phenomenal pick. Trent McDuffie, great cornerback. George Pickens, very, very good wide receiver. And then we come back and get arguably the best linebacker in the nation right now, Christian Harris out of Alabama. I looked at Nicobe Dean in round one, decided not to pull the trigger and it pays off here. We get Christian Harris at the top of the third round. That is extremely phenomenal value. For the Detroit Lions gotta love what we're seeing so far just from our own selections we've gotten so much better on defense on all three levels we've gotten an elite edge rusher someone who's going to be very good in the run game as well Christian Harris who's a tackle machine at that linebacker spot and then Trent McDuffie who I think is a very very good cornerback and really actually underrated because of his size and then on the offensive side we at least get one weapon you know maybe I'd like to do a little bit more there uh, but with some of the needs on this defense I, I just felt like I had to go the ways I've gone uh, so at this point, we're back here. Now, pick 98. We're on the clock here. And we're looking for a little bit more help, probably on the offensive side of the football, to be completely honest with you. Maybe an interior offensive line. That could make some sense. Alec Lindstrom, I really like the value here, grabbing a guy like him. I also want to go back, look at the wide receiver position a little bit more. I do like Romeo Dubs quite a bit, who's out here, but he's not ranked until lower. Uh, I think him and Justin Ross both probably go higher than where they're currently ranked on this predictive board. Of course, this board was not set up by me. Um, running back spot, I don't necessarily love what's out here at this point. Uh, there's a few guys uh, earlier in the draft that are very, very talented, but I just don't think it makes sense with the Lions already having DeAndre Swift, who's you know really having a good season himself. Quarterback spot, now this is where we could get interesting. Spencer Rattler's out here. I know he's been terrible for Ohio, or for Oklahoma, excuse me. I know that he hasn't been the player that everyone thought he could be, but at the same time, some of those physicals are still there. They have time to sit him behind Jared Goff, really try and coach him up, help him learn protections, help him develop some of that footwork in the pocket, help him go work on going through his progressions and really just developing as a quarterback. 
there's a lot of value here at pick 98 to pull the trigger on something like that. Looking ahead, uh, this is, I think, our final pick of the mock draft as well. So I feel like I really want to pull the trigger here um, and bank on the upside for Spencer Rattler. So that's what I'm going to do here. I did consider Romeo Dubs, uh, and I also did consider Justin Ross, two wide receivers I like. However, I just, you have to find a quarterback at some point if you're the Detroit Lions. And I think that, you know, taking that risk on Rattler, there's a lot of upside there. Now, I know he hasn't had that great of a season. I know he got benched for Caleb Williams, who is probably going to be a first round pick when he comes out a few years from now. But it's just, it makes too much sense to me to not, uh, to pass up on Spencer Rattler there, I think would just be a little bit of a head scratcher, especially since that was our last pick here at the mock draft. I think this really addresses a key need for the foot for the team you know we we, drew, we addressed edge we draft we had drafted a cornerback we found a wide receiver we found a linebacker really really great value on our linebacker by the way and then we come back and we make a phenomenal high upside pick in spencer rattler uh, i know that if pff was grading this they would fall in love with that because pff loves the idea of taking a quarterback every single round essentially i myself do not love that idea i think that you know you have to be patient quarterbacks just don't come out and fall to you and then end up being elite very often. However, I think Spencer Rattler with the traits that he possesses at that quarterback position could be a rare um, rare instance here where he does make some sense for Detroit to take 98th overall, especially when you've already uh, able to grab this much talent throughout the draft. Again, going through our picks, Kayvon Thibodeau first overall, Trent McDuffie with pick 28, 33, we come back, get the Georgia wide receiver, George Pickens. Pick 65, the Detroit Lions, we grab Christian Harris, and then 98, Spencer Rattler. I, I don't think there's a much better draft pick than this, uh, draft haul than this, honestly. You're getting two really good players uh, from the Pac-12. You're getting three really good players uh, as well from rounds two through three, or rounds two through four there in Pickens, Harris, and Rattler. I think this is the phenomenal scenario for the Detroit Lions. Hopefully you guys did enjoy today's video. Leave me a, a draft grade in the comment section what you think about this. Uh, rate it from A to F. I would love to know. And then also request what other teams you would like to see. This was a requested video from one of our subscribers. So go ahead, request what team you'd love to see. Hopefully you guys did enjoy. Detroit Lions fans, we'll hope you can get a win this week against the Philadelphia Eagles. I'm not counting you out. You're at home. I think you can get the job done. Check out some of the other videos on the channel, and we'll catch you guys in the very next Utility Sports video.